Hello and welcome back to another episode of my Processing Subscriber Images videos. Uh, in this one we're going to be working on an image sent in to me by Ken Doyle. Uh, so thanks Ken for sending that in. Um, actually there was two raw files that he sent in and the, uh, the thing that, that Ken asked me to focus on in this video was showing the step-by-step uh, -step process of blending those two exposures together in Photoshop to create a high dynamic range image. Um, what actually ended up happening is that we actually expanded that to three exposures. So I've used one of those exposures to create another brighter exposure so that we actually start the process with three bracketed exposures. So I'll show you the whole process starting off in Lightroom and then moving over into Photoshop using luminosity masks to, uh, to blend those three exposures and then with a couple of other techniques on the end to, uh, to just get their image over the finish line. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube if you're watching on the YouTube page. And remember to subscribe to my channel so that you uh, get notified every time I publish a new one of these uh, videos. Now let's get started and move over to Photoshop. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom and I've got Ken's two images um, just loaded in as raw files. I haven't made any adjustments to them yet. So what we can see, we've got a dark exposure here. And you know this this is a great exposure for capturing that, that beautiful golden light on the uh, you know on the on the mountain side there in the in the distance, and yeah the beautiful reflection here in the more in the foreground as well. Um, so that this is the great exposure for this uh, for for the uh, capturing the highlights. Then we've got a middle exposure here, um, which does a great job of capturing the grasses and this. Uh, sort of gray slash silver uh, side you know, to, to the cliff um, just here on the left-hand side. And we've got nice detail in the, uh, in the foreground reflections. However, the, uh, the shadows here in these trees are still really, really dark. So you know, I think ideally we would have had a third exposure which was exposed maybe um, between one and two stops brighter than this, and then we'd actually blend the three together. So um, what I'm actually gonna do is just create a virtual copy in Lightroom of this light exposure. And then I'm just gonna create like a faux bracketed exposure um, by increasing the exposure value of this one here. So just, just until we can see some nice detail in these trees here. So that just happens to be about 1.5 stops brighter. So now we have the dark exposure, the middle and the bright exposure. So um, yeah, I think the white balance, everything else looks good in Lightroom. Uh, so I'm just gonna highlight all three of these in the, in the film strip down the bottom, right click, edit in, and then open as layers in Photoshop. So this is gonna uh, load each of these exposures into their own layer in the same Photoshop document. So I can then blend them together using um, some luminosity masking techniques. So once that has uh, finished doing what it's doing, as you can see here, we've got three layers now. I'll just readjust these so that we've got the, um, you know, so they're in order. So top is the brightest, middle is the middle, bottom is the darkest. So um, yeah, I think for this, uh, yeah, this time I'm going to start with the middle exposure and then blend the shadows and then blend the highlights into this middle exposure. So yeah, I think this is, you know, the reason I'm picking the middle exposure to start with is because that's the one that's got the most detail that I'm going to use. Uh, so yeah, let's, add a layer mask to this and now we need to brush through the highlights in the image to reveal the highlights from the darker exposure underneath. Um, so let's grab a black brush, 30% opacity. I'm going to use luminosity masks for this. I'll put some videos, uh, some links to some videos in the description of this video on um, you know, how to actually do exactly what I'm doing here. And uh, yeah, there, there's some videos there that will teach you these processes manually. Um, but if you have my luminosity masking panel, then the whole process becomes a lot easier and quicker because you can just 
do all of that manual stuff in a couple of clicks. So the first thing that I'm going to do is uh, load a highlight selection. But I just want to make sure that it's going to be the right selection before I use it. So I'm going to turn the previews on and I'll click the one button here to load a, a highlights one selection. So yeah, I think that's um, probably going to be okay. Um, I may have to alter the mask if this kind of dark patch here in the, uh, you know, in that, in that mountain in the distance, uh, if that starts to sort of wash the contrast out a bit. Um, but let's, for now, let's give it a go. Use mask, um, command H or control H to hide the marching ants. Click on the layer mask and with a large brush, I'm just going to brush through the sky and through that mountain there. Just zoom out so I can get across the top of the uh, top of the frame. Okay, this is looking pretty, pretty good, I think. Maybe those clouds are getting a little bit dark, but I can probably just lighten those up later once I've uh, blended. All right, so let's see. Turning this layer mask off, here's the original middle layer. And now here's with the darker layer blended in. Now, I probably won't blend in um, anything from the foreground here. Um, technically, the foreground, because it's a reflection, it's going to need to reflect a little bit darker than the original object that's reflecting. But I'll deal with that later um, because we've actually got enough information in here. There's nothing that's too overexposed um, that needs blending from that dark exposure. Uh, so with that done, let's uh, move on to blending in the shadows. So I'm going to activate this top layer and I'll, this time I'll add a black layer mask. So holding Alt or Option on the keyboard and click the Add Layer Mask button, it's going to add a black mask. So we can see the original layer and the blend. Um, now we need to, uh, what do we need to do? So we need to load a shadow selection so that we can brush these trees through and reveal these lighter trees from this top exposure. So let's see how we can do that best. Um, well, let's just have a look at some of the previews of some of the selections that we can create here. So if I use the panel and click the shadows one selection, um, it's probably not quite enough isolation between the trees and the sky. Shadows 2 is probably going to get closer. Still got some midtones coming through there. Shadows 3, mm, shadows 4, maybe. Okay, we're starting to get there now. I think I'll use this selection. Um, and again, if um, you know if you skipped forward and missed when I said it a minute ago, um, you know, if you want to know how to use and how to create these luminosity masks in the channels panel and not with my luminosity masking panel, then um, yeah, I'll put some links in the description for this video on YouTube uh, to some other videos that will teach you how to do that. But for the purpose of this, I'm just using the panel to speed things up a bit. So let's use this mask. Let's click that use mask button and it loads it as a selection. Now I'll hide the marching ants with command or control H. My white brush selected this time and let's use a 50% opacity on the brush and just brush through here. And I will just, I will brush into this uh, mountain here on the left. Okay. So we can see as I kind of brushed over the, um, the mountain in the distance there, it did, well, it hasn't restricted the brush strokes perfectly, but that's okay. We can, <clears throat> we can uh, rectify that in a minute, but let's just get these shadows here in the foreground as well. And maybe if I just reduce the opacity on the brush to 20%, I can just, just blend that in a bit here. Okay. So let's come back to this, uh, this mountain up here in the background. So I'll 
um, Alt or Option, click on the layer mask. And we can see here that selection wasn't perfect. So, you know, we have actually inadvertently brushed and revealed some of this bright layer in that distant uh, mountain. We've got a couple of options on how we can fix this up, but what's probably going to be the easiest is to use the burn tool and just brush directly into the layer mask. So I want to burn, let's say, uh, burn the shadows and that should protect the highlights that I've brushed in here. Um, so I'm just going to increase the exposure there a bit. So I'm just brushing this away and I don't, I still don't really want to brush over the edges here because if it's not a perfect white, then it still will kind of brush the bits out that I don't want to be brushing out. But this is, you know, using the burn tool or the dodge tool, if we're doing it in reverse, is still going to be better than just using a black or a white brush just because it is restricting to some degree. Um, Oh, what's going on here? I've clicked the wrong tool. Uh, yeah, it's still, still restricting what I'm doing here to some degree. So with that done, actually, let's do this bit down the bottom here as well, just to make sure. Okay, there we go. So that, mm, do you know what? I probably want to undo it from this part through the middle here as well. So let's see what I can do about that. Okay. Let's have another look now. Okay, so I'm going to sacrifice the tops of these trees a little bit because I really, yeah, I don't want to wash out that shadow part of this mountain here. Um, okay, let's just recover the same contrast down here. So um, yeah, with the blending done, I think we're in a pretty good place to move on. Um, now, the uh, the image itself has already done a lot of the hard work for us. Um, you know, the fact that the scene is uh, it's a really beautiful scene. Obviously, um, you know, there's uh, really great color, and the the white balance was captured um, correctly in camera. So there's not any colors to change. Um, you know, really the biggest task has already been done, which is the exposure blending. Um, so really the only things that would uh, that I would do beyond this, um, if this was my own shot, would be to just kind of recalibrate the, the darkness of the, uh, the foreground here, just make it a bit darker than the, uh, you know, the things that it's reflecting. So we can just see here that the reflection of the mountain there is just a bit brighter than the mountain itself. So I'd kind of just fix that up a bit, um, you know, using probably a curves adjustment. So let's let's make that adjustment first, um, just a real quick version. So, you know, perhaps just, just with the curve here, just darken and then invert the mask and then grab a brush with a white foreground color to, to brush into the water here, just to darken it and just, make that so that it's not brighter than the, the than what it's reflecting. Uh, the sky and this gray section over here could use a little bit more contrast. So we could add a curves adjustment here just for a real quick version. Um, I'll just create like an S curve here. And then we could invert that and again, brush it in through the sky and through the mountain here. And that's just making that pop a little bit more. And then we can see if we look at the histogram, uh, we've got quite a, quite a long, thin, flat section here. 
uh, which means that the image is technically a bit underexposed at the moment. Now, I quite like it at its current sort of brightness level. Um, but, you know, if you wanted to make it fill, you know, make the histogram stretch all the way to, to white um, and, you know, brighten the image up uh, to kind of a correct level in terms of the histogram, um, then we could do that with the levels adjustment. The only thing is, this little white strip here, um, you know, if we were to just crank this all the way to the left, to this point here, then we're, we're actually clipping those highlights, which I can see just visually is, um, it's probably not even in all of the color channels. Um, so red, green, or oh, maybe, oh yeah, we can see the blue channel here doesn't go all the way to the end. Um, so we're actually clipping only the red and green channels. Um, but still we would need to just repair that um, you know just by masking it out of those overexposed parts unless of course you like the effect that it gives um, and then just up here in the cloud is a little bit overexposed um, and yeah really I mean you know that yeah apart from some sort of further contrast, adjustments um, you know that you've probably seen a hundred times in my previous videos just using the levels adjustment to increase contrast and then you know mask that contrast in so invert the mask grab a white brush and then we can mask it into the shot you know so we can make these greens pop a little bit more uh, maybe we can add a bit through the middle here just to make that pop um, so again, it's a subtle adjustment this time, uh, but you would kind of build these kind of adjustments up so that they have a bigger impact by the, by the time you come to the end of the workflow. Uh, maybe we can just have a quick preview of what the autumn effect might look like. Um, it can be a bit risky on a daytime shot like this. Um, you know, the risk being that it's gonna look over-processed, but we can have a look and see if it kind of does does anything nice and at the very least it can just give us an idea of what the image would look like with more color and contrast if we were going to do it the other way uh, using the levels and curves adjustments and um, so yeah that autumn button there i've just used the autumn effect button in my luminosity masking panel and again as i've been mentioning in the previous videos um, if you want to learn how to actually do that if you're not sure exactly the steps to create the autumn effect then i've got uh, some videos on that, which I'll put the links to in the description below uh, on YouTube. Um, but yeah, so the, the autumn effect button on my luminosity masking panel does it all for us and it gives us a black layer mask so we can brush it in if we want, or we can just invert the mask to apply the effect to the whole image. Um, I think it actually looks pretty good uh, like this, apart from the fact the shadows are very, very dark. So maybe we can just use the panel to mask it out of those darkest shadows. Um, so let's grab a shadows selection at the five end of the uh, of the bar here, the luminosity selection bar. So a shadows five selection, uh, and let's modify it with a curve uh, with a levels adjustment. Um, so we can push those blacks up so that it's really isolating only those darkest, darkest shadows. Click OK, click Use Mask. And again, if uh, if you're not sure what's happening here, what I'm doing with the Luminosity Masking Panel, then I'll show you the manual way in some other videos that I'll link to in the description below. Uh, so hide the marching ants, Command H, uh, black brush. And now let's just brush through these darkest underexposed parts from this autumn layer. So this luminosity mask, or well, the luminosity selection is restricting our brush strokes so that it's only brushing out of those darkest parts. And I think that's probably still a bit strong overall this effect. So let's reduce the opacity a little bit, maybe bring it down to 50%. And there we go. I think 
this is, uh, I mean, I'd be happy with this if it was my own shot. I'd be more than happy. I'm actually quite jealous um, that, that I didn't capture this myself. Um, so yeah, I think this probably marks a good point to, uh, to sign this video off. Um, yeah, thanks again, Ken, for sending this set of images in and to everyone else, I will uh, yeah, speak to you again soon.